Welcome to Insight. Today we're chatting with Todd Slisher, Executive Director of the Sloan Museum and Longway Planetarium, and Kay Schwartz, the Director of the Flint Public Library, who have generously agreed to share some of their experience with us. I'd like to thank you both for joining us today, and thank you for sharing the work of the library and of the planetarium and of the Sloan Museum. So could you talk about shaping a modern library for relevance and for the complementary aspects of, of books, in-person learning, distance learning? How do libraries function today? Well, you know, libraries have been actually early adopters of technology all through um, the times, the, the last 50, 60 years when uh, databases first became accessible uh, and usable, uh, the card catalog went into a database, right? Mm -hmm. Because it was a perfect application for that new technology. And so I would say that libraries are, um, in many communities like ours, leading the way um, toward use of technology for just those functions that you talked about, education, learning, um, being able to check a book out of the library at 10 o'clock on Sunday night, even though the library is not open because you can download it to your device. You know, the other thing that I think is really um, significant about a big library building like ours is that it's a community hub and a community gathering place. And it's a scene as the people's place, as kind of neutral territory, for having sometimes difficult discussions in your community and um, a place where everybody from any walk of life is welcomed in. And you're exploring all knowledge, whereas uh, you, Todd, are exploring specific types of knowledge, right? As you are shaping your uh, exhibits, how are you thinking about that aspect of your mission and, and ensuring that that in-person experience is 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 the thing that complements all these other different technologies that we have. Yes, well, we focus primarily on science and history at uh, Sloan Museum and Longway Planetarium. And you're exactly right in that in-person facilitation can really help learning uh, compared to reading it out of a book, watching a video, going online and Googling it. Um, you know, you can get knowledge that way. But oftentimes you miss things or you misunderstand things or you may understand things a little bit incorrectly. With the in-person facilitation, if you have a docent there with you guiding you through the knowledge, maybe they'll offer some pathways that you haven't even thought about. That in-person component is, is very, very important to the learning styles that we have, whether it's with the general public or whether it's with school field trips or scouts. Um, we also think that getting your hands on and doing things is very important too. People say, do you still use the Dewey Decimal System? Do you still have you know, a way of filing your books? Yes, we do, because we wanna be able to go to the shelf and find it there. Mm -hmm. But the exciting thing about having books organized in that way, especially in the nonfiction where there's a Dewey Decimal System with a topic, is that Somebody may ask the librarian for a particular book or a particular subject. They go to the shelf with their Dewey Decimal number and they find that book. But they start looking to the left and the right and they find a book they didn't know they were looking for. Right. And that's better than the book that they went to fetch. It's true of books and it's true of being in an environment where you can interact with, with people in that kind of a way. These institutions are in reasonably close physical proximity to each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, two miles away is not is not very far for, I, I believe the library is about uh, two. Actually, we are next door here. We are just moving back into our renovated building. Oh, okay. I didn't our know temporary that. facility was a couple miles away, but we are actually, I walked here th across the parking lot. Could you talk a little bit about how you view that as an asset and how you try to exploit that as an asset in terms of audiences, board connections, uh, uh, donor connections, and, and programming and events? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's an incredible asset just because we can leverage off the strengths of all of the different institutions here to provide a well-rounded experience. 
One great example of that is the Flint Cultural Center Academy, which is our K through eight um, school. Uh, it's a char public charter school that's here on campus. Mm -hmm. The kids from that institution get many sorts of different experiences in the different buildings. The library is their public is their school library. Mm -hmm. Sloan Museum and Longway Planetarium is where they go to get extra programs on social studies, history, science. The uh, FIA is their art school, you know, basically, and their art classes. The FIM does music and dance. So it's an opportunity for, you know, that's, that's just an example for those kids. But our other visitors have that same sort of experience if they move between the buildings. And, you know, if they find something interesting over at Longway Planetarium that they heard about in the show, they can go to the library and check out a book on that the same day. And you're coming right off of a, a redevelopment, right? Yes, yes. So the Sloan so Museum has been, about that. been changing into the Sloan Museum of Discovery. So Sloan Museum originally started in 1966 as mm -hmm. primarily a history and automotive museum, but it has grown through the years. And the new museum actually will double the square footage. So we're going to from 58,000 square feet to 107,000 square feet and incorporating all sorts of different exhibit galleries in a much more kind of hands-on fashion than the old museum was. So we'll have a new hands-on science gallery, early childhood gallery. Of course, we still talk about Flint and Genesee County history, and you can't get into Flint and Genesee County history without seeing the cars. So we have a new car gallery as well. But it's all just a really well-rounded experience in a new state-of-the-art museum that, uh, you know, Flint's not really large enough to have a standalone history museum, a standalone science center. Here we're combining those two concepts to... Uh, uh, for the benefit of the whole community. But history also, because of this community's identity as a, as a maker community, as, as mm -hmm. a community of design, uh, the association, the long association with the automotive industry, your history also is the history of design, of, of, of making, mm -hmm. of creation. It's, it, it's not a history of, uh, of revolutionary war, for example. Right? No, no, it's not. It, it's a history of the people here and the communities here and their involvement both in the auto industry and in other industries. But that that really at the core, it's the people's stories that we're trying to tell. And yes, you are right. This is a maker's community. And to reflect that, you know, we have maker spaces in the new museum. We talk about the automobile not as a, hey, here's a car and this is what it looked like. But in our new auto gallery, we're going to be talking about the automobile in terms of advancement and design, whether it's from early, early automobiles to, you know, to safety methods like brakes or, for instance, the first automobile to have a backup camera in it. Uh, we have in our collection, which is the Centurion. It's a 1950s area vehicle. Believe it or not, yes, they had a backup camera in a 1950s <laughs> era car. Uh, that didn't come into common use for a long time after that. But we talk about you know how how the uh, progression of the automobile happened, and we even have a rotating concept car from General Motors that will be changing every year, so we can talk about the future of the automobile and where it's going. Could you talk a little bit about the various? Uh, types of knowledge that I can access by coming to your facilities? Sure, and, and let's focus on the, the digital collections that we buy on behalf of everybody in Flint so that they can borrow them uh, by downloading them or streaming them. So These are subscriptions you know, that you provide. That's correct. As, well, and as a member of the library, I would be able to... Correct. So so we, just like we buy physical books and mm -hmm. music CDs and other things for people to come and check out, we purchase collections of um, digital media from music to um, books to audio, e-books to audio books, to streaming movies mm -hmm. that um, people can access from their devices at home. We're finding that fortunately, digital devices, at least to the extent of a smartphone, is penetrating pretty well, in, even into homes that um, you know are not wealthy. And so there is some kind of a digital device that can access those resources. Especially now, I think, with the schools having um, made it possible during this pandemic for children to have internet access to learn at home. So um, our resources that we've bought on behalf of um, the people who use the library are even more accessible, even in um, you know areas of Flint that might not have 
had access before. And we want to break down any barrier we can to access or use of the facility. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons that a number of years ago we passed the uh, arts and culture millage so that the museum is free admission to everybody in Genesee County. So that way there's not even a barrier of an admission price or an admission ticket for them to come in and use the facility to gain that knowledge, to use the exhibits, to work with a docent, to be part of our programs. So we're very proud of that fact and, and very proud that we work with the community and for the community to help them develop the knowledge that they need. The millage for arts and culture that enabled us to send every one of our constituents over to the Sloan Museum and be able to get free admission there was a total game changer. Because though the admission was reasonable and probably less <laughs> than many museums around the country, it was an amount of money that some of our the people who use our library could never have afforded. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it, it totally transformed the way we could refer people to the other cultural center institutions who are our neighbors right across the street and right kitty corner across the street by the fact that um, they, they had uh, free admission. And, you know, I've said this about libraries, and so I'll say it about the arts and culture millage too. I cannot think of a better use of taxpayer money than to put your money in a pool like that and then make something available to everyone that is beneficial to everyone. Thousands of community members come on a specific night and all of the institutions are free and open with special programming. This is generally done in early December. And so it just becomes a, a festive occasion for the whole community to, and they can you know, go through the library, they can go through Sloan Museum, they can come in and see a show in the planetarium, they can go to the Flint Institute of Arts, but it's, it's a great uh, opportunity for the community to come together. And there's programming all over campus. This is an incredible and unique community. Um, I call it a big small town. Um, it's in a county of 400 plus thousand people, a city of 80 plus thousand people. Um, and yet, um, you could call a meeting for 24 hours from now that had to address an issue uh, to get all the community leaders together in one room, they would come and they would know each other. And so I think the person who comes in here um, is going to needs to realize they're going to be an important part of a rel relatively small community um, of leaders who want all of us to succeed. And so I think there's an opportunity to ask for and get help, to ask for and make friends, and um, really um, become embedded in this community and embraced by it quickly. First of all, second case uh, <laughs> pieces, that is very important in the community. But just basically, you know, I would encourage them to come in and, and to listen a little bit to spend you know, the first month or two getting to know the community uh, well and get out into the community and listen to the residents and the people and the community leaders, but you know everybody to find out more about the community, especially, you know, I didn't grow up in Flint. You know, this is not my hometown. Right. I came here you know, about eight years ago and I was down in Detroit before this, but that was very valuable for me is just listening to all the members of the community, listening to the other people on the Cultural Center ca campus, and coming to understand the community. That Flint is a very, as, as Kay said, very unique community. Mm -hmm. um, it's gritty, it's resilient. They pride themselves on being able to get through tough events and tough times because they've been through a lot. And uh, I think the community members take a lot of pride in that, in, in that resilience and in, the, in their ability to overcome. Thank you so much, Kay Schwartz. Thank you so much for uh, giving us a uh, background in the work that you've done as director of the Flint Public Library. You're welcome. Uh, Tom Slisher, uh, also as the uh, executive director of the Sloan Museum and Longway Planetarium. Yes, this thank has you. just been really, really terrific. Thank you so much for your insights. Great questions. Thank you very much.